mit Eric Dyer. Eric, very warm welcome. Thank it's you very a, much. It's a big first for me, <laughs> for all of us, uh, the first uh, English podcast for <laughs> FC Bayern. Very glad you're here. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Are we able to switch to German and leave the English away? N Not uh, yet? No. <laughs> How is the German doing? Sehr, sehr gut. <laughs> sehr, sehr gut. That's a, that sehr, sounds sehr good. good. Um, no, I'm, I'm having lessons. So, uh, yeah, I have lessons every morning at the club with Max. The, uh, every the morning? Teacher. Every morning, yeah, before training. So I'm trying my best. But, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's going okay. You're obviously good with uh, languages, Portuguese, right? Spanish? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. English, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Portuguese, Spanish, English. Um, but yeah, German is something completely different just because, um, yeah, the Latin languages like Portuguese, Spanish, um, they're very similar and Italian, French, I can understand quite a lot. But obviously this is something completely different. The way German, you, you format the sentences as well is different to English. So um, this is a little complicated. If it was a direct uh, translation, it would be a little bit easier, but um, I will get there. Do you have a first favorite sentence in German, something you you kind of use more often, maybe on the field or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, off gets. Off gets. Off gets. Off gets. Off gets. Off gets. Servus, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Bis That's morgen. Guten Morgen. Yeah, these, these are my most common ones, I would say. Sounds pretty good. Bas yeah. It's basic, but uh, yeah. It helps. I will get there. By the summer, I, I will be able to do something. Oh, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like... I'll uh, be back. I'll be back with you in the summer. <laughs> great. Then we do one in German. Yeah. For German It will be fans very well. short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a small tradition, I'd say. Um, we always prepare a present. Our producer does. He, he reads a lot about our guests, Daniel. Lovely. Um, and yeah, he found out a couple of things about you. So okay. that's the present. Uh, Thank you very much. Go ahead. Unwrap it. Let our uh, listeners I love know. a present. <laughs> well, it's it's a, I can tell it's a book, and I think it's in German. So th this is going to be something that's oh oh nice oh very nice book. It's uh, Take Me to the Lakes, München edition. Yeah, because I've been to uh, Tegensee. Yes. Yeah. The I think these are all the the lakes around Munich. Yes, that's right. That so, is that is a very very nice book. Good idea. Thank you very much. Yeah, very good idea. But that brings uh, up obviously that first topic. Um, we saw you at uh, Lake Tegernsee on Instagram. Yeah. Um, is that something you really enjoy about Munich? The nature. Yeah, I like the nature a lot. My family as well. My wife and. Um, Yeah, my daughter is a baby, so she doesn't know yet, but she, she has no choice but to like it. <laughs> but it's always um, good for her to be out on, in yeah, the fresh air. Yeah, and I have a dog, so I like to walk. Nature is um, probably where I feel most comfortable, you know. So, um, so yeah, Munich is, is, a, is a fantastic city f uh, for me in this sense, because even in the city there is a lot. There are a lot of parks and um, to Tegensee. Uh, I went twice to Tegensee, actually, and... Um, It's a really beautiful, beautiful place. And um, yeah, we had a great time there and the weather was good. So um, we, had a, we had a walk around the lake and, and uh, had some food and it was very nice. So you and, and your dog as well adopted well to, to Munich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very well. I really love the city. Um, it's very different to London where I was before. Um, a lot smaller, calmer um, and uh, no traffic. Everything is easy to drive to, so um, the weather, even when it's cold, I, I find a lot of the time the sky is blue and it's sunny, so um, this is very nice. And uh, as I said before, the nature, so yeah, we're very happy, very, very happy in the city. And obviously uh, a big club, FC yeah. Bayern Munich. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Your first impressions on, on this club? Yeah, obviously I had already a, a, a very good idea of the club, you know, because of its size and its history. It's one of those clubs that uh, it doesn't matter where you live, anywhere in the world, wherever you're from, you know about you know about Bayern Munich, you know. So um, you already have a very good idea. You already know a bit of the history. You know some of the the great players that have played here. Um, so yeah, it's one of those clubs that 
even without arriving you already know a lot about it and then obviously when i arrived you're still hit with a bit of a surprise of how how big it really is and i really uh feel a very um yeah very proud to play for play for this club um very very proud and um yeah it's a, it's also a club that i feel I, I identify with myself has it been a very easy very quick decision making taking on on this one to to come here Yeah, very, very quick. When I knew there was the opportunity, um, there was one phone call and, and uh, let's go, you know, and, and uh, here I am. <laughs> Not a second phone call to uh, Harry Kane to <laughs> ask him about this club? <laughs> no, there was some, we had some text messages. But to be honest, we didn't speak too much um, before. We spoke a little bit. I was following Bayern probably more than in previous years just because he was playing here. So, um, you know, when your friends go to play to certain clubs you you know I, I star them on live score so I can follow a bit closer the clubs that uh, my friends play for and um, obviously watch a bit a bit more of them so I was already doing that which obviously I'm not thinking you know you know at the time that I was I was coming but obviously that helped me as well um, and then I spoke to him a little bit and um, there wasn't need for any convincing it was just asking him about the club the city and and um, I knew that he was adapting very well and he was enjoying it a lot already. And then, uh, yeah, here we are. Did he help you to introduce you to everyone? Yeah, obviously, it's, it's it's obviously a lot easier when you have someone that you know very well that that is already at a club, you know. Um, but then there are lots of players as well that you come across in your career. Maybe you don't know them personally, but, you know, uh, Trupo, I played against him a long time ago when he was at Stoke and Serge Nabry, obviously, he played for, for Arsenal and West Brom in England. So I played against him, Leroy, the same. Um, I played a few times against Germany, you know, against Manu and Thomas and Leon and Josh. So you already know each other a little bit, but then obviously it's different uh, on a personal level. You then playing with each other, but there's already that thing where you've crossed paths before, yeah. And you mostly did play with Harry, yeah. Anyways, uh, you're a defender. Uh, let's let's talk about uh, Harry and his qualities. Uh, why why is he that good? <laughs> I don't know. Um, he's extremely focused, extremely hardworking. Um, uh, naturally, I think all of us are competitive. You know, um, to be in this position, you have to be very competitive. And I think we, me and him, apart from these six months before, we've pretty much shared our whole professional careers together more or less a little bit at the beginning we missed together but um yeah he's just very consistent i would say this is the biggest thing about him he's very consistent every day in the way that he works in the way that he prepares himself and then obviously the games are just a, a continuation of that consistency that he shows every day in his behaviors you know in, in the way that he trains the way that he tries to get better um And yeah, his consistency over the last 10 years is is incredible. Yeah, he obviously adopted to the Bundesliga very well, very fast. Mm. You did as well. Um, what's the difference between uh, the Bundesliga and the Premier League? There is a lot of quality in the Bundesliga. The I think the games are a little bit more tactical. The, there's It's less of a, a tennis match, you know, where it goes back and forth. I think this in England is... You Still know, some kick and rush. <laughs> not not kick and rush, but a lot of a lot of transitions, you know. It's it's very fast from one end of the pitch to the other, where in Germany, I feel like both teams, even even maybe the smaller teams that play against us, they, they still want to try and arrive in our half of the pitch in, in controlled possession. Whereas um, in England, I feel that it, it, it goes back and forth a lot more, a lot quicker. Does that uh, change anything for you personally in the way you play? Do you have to adapt? I think so. Just understanding that a little bit. I think um, obviously for us many times we, uh, we, we dominate in possession, you know, and it's about trying to stay patient and be... I think discipline is shown in many ways and I think one way discipline is showed is is just to have the patience to keep doing the same thing over and over again and 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 trust that the it it will arrive you know the goals will arrive the chances will arrive to 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 mentally stay quite stable and not not get frustrated do you think there's a different types of defenders and if so what what kind of type are you how would you describe your game 
I think every footballer tries to play to their strengths individually. What are yours? It's difficult to speak about your own qualities. I prefer I someone else to speak for me. <laughs> <laughs> your first uh, training sessions here, um, apart from Harry, that you already knew very well, um, who impressed you? Everywhere there is quality, you know, in this team. From afar, I've always been a huge fan of, of Manu, you know, because <laughs> you're just incredible, incredible goalkeeper. And to play with him is, is uh, yeah, it's fantastic. You know, I, I, love, I love playing with him. And uh, I really like his, his demeanor, you know, his personality and, and uh, his calmness on the pitch. It, it's very nice to feel that from behind you. And obviously, I want to give that to the people in front of me as well, is that same feel, feeling of calmness. Um, I think as defensive players, that's what you want to give the rest of the team is that feeling of don't worry, it's okay, I'm here, <laughs> I'm here for you. Um, so I'd say, yeah, Manu and then uh, I, I knew about Jamal, but uh, obviously seeing him um, up close, you know, and, and playing on the same team as him, I would say he's, he's uh, the best talent I've ever seen, I think, yeah. Wow. What I think surprised me the most maybe is his his physicality, you know. He, he he's uh it's deceiving how how fast and agile and, and, and strong he is. And then obviously you, you pair that with his uh technical ability. Um and, and now at the moment he's becoming more and more decisive with assists and goals, which obviously for an offensive player is the icing. <laughs> um but uh yeah, his talent is uh, is undeniable. So we talked about uh, your start in the club now on the private side of life. Uh, your start into this year was uh, special as well. Um, you had a child. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah Congratulations. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Your first uh, daughter, right? Yeah, it was very special. Um, she was born in London. I was in Portugal. We were in the training camp and then uh, I flew I flew back for, for her birth. And luckily I was, I was there in time and um, no, my wife deserves all the credit because uh, I didn't really do anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, she had to deal with uh, being by herself, you know, and um, me not being there. And and um, so, yeah, she she's the one that deserves all the credit. Do you think about um, what's important for you in, in raising a child or yeah. is that just something that comes out of you? No, no, no. It's something I've thought about for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, It's the biggest responsibility in life, you know. So I think um, I think I've thought about it a lot. I've debated it a lot with many people for for many years before I was even a, a father. So um, yeah, the best advice I've ever been given, I think, is to focus on your own behavior because all they do is copy you. So um, so um, if you carry yourself in the right way and you and you um, live your life in the right way, whatever the right way is to you, um, you have to trust that it is the right way. But If you live your life in that way, then um, yeah, hopefully she she has a good uh, role model to follow, and and then yeah, this is probably the biggest challenge. Yeah, it does sound uh, like she does have a perfect role model, <laughs> but you. probably good moment for for us to 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 step back a little bit to go back uh, in time. Uh, you were born uh, in Cheltenham. Yeah, 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 What's that like? Can you kind of describe well, to our it's, listeners? Uh, yeah, it's a funny thing because everyone always says like, oh, he's from Cheltenham, you know, but I'm not from Cheltenham. My grandma, she passed away now, but she was from Cheltenham and she lived in Cheltenham and, and my mum was pregnant with me and my dad was away. Just like I was <laughs> a tennis pro player. Uh, yeah. But was that his the reason past why? Is, okay. like his work afterwards. Um, and Uh, so she, my mum went to stay with her mum just because I was due at some point. And uh, so she went to stay with her mum in Cheltenham and I was born in Cheltenham. But I think I spent one day there or, or two days. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how long I was in the hospital, but then we went home. So I'm not really from there. It's just uh, I was born there just because that's how it happened, you know. And so you're actually from where? <laughs> what, what would you say? Because that's a that's a interesting story. We'll we'll lead up to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't really know um, <laughs> where I'm from in that sense. We lived. There wasn't really anything near us. We lived in south of London, about an hour and a half south of London. Um, I think the closest town was a town called Horsham, not far from Brighton. So, so uh, English countryside. Yeah, as you would of, imagine. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was there until I was seven, until I moved to Portugal. 
so I, I don't really remember. I remember like the house a little bit that we that we lived in, but I don't really remember anything. I was too young, you know. I I don't really remember anything from that time. All I remember is from pictures and what people tell me. So um, yeah. Yeah, we can talk about uh, Portugal later on or, mm. or just now. But mm. uh, as you mentioned, your father, Jeremy, he was a tennis pro player. Is that mm. right? Yeah, yeah, when he was young. Did yeah. he try to, to get you into tennis as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I played a lot of tennis, obviously, because of this. When I was young, I played a lot of tennis as well. Um, yeah, it's definitely like my second sport in terms of uh, my... I don't play it a lot now, but in terms of my quality, I'd say it's it's better than my golf. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but but you try that as well. You yeah. have a lot of teammates here. Yeah, I play. Yeah, golf is the the sport I definitely play the most, other than football. But um, yeah, when I was growing up, it was obviously uh, f tennis and football. But um, yeah, from from a very young age, I, I, I was obsessed with football. Did your father ever? give you any advices in in the sense of uh, what is it like to be a pro yeah of course he, yeah of, he, was, he was the biggest influence on me you know um obviously as uh, as my parents as well uh but uh him and my mother he was able to guide me um especially in my teenage years obviously from his experiences if you're trying to become a, a professional so um obviously that had a big impact on me yeah so we already mentioned portugal mm. um i would say you're almost half portuguese yeah. uh, how far would you go <laughs> yeah. yeah tell I us would, about it uh, tell tell the so. fans out there uh, what's what's the background with the P portugal story no I, mo i moved to portugal when i was uh, i think i was seven. i started playing for for sporting lisbon when i was eight years old uh and i made my my debut in the professional the senior team at 18 and then at 20 i, I signed for tottenham so Yeah, sporting is really like uh, what Bayern is to Thomas, you know, like this is my home kind of, you know, where where, I, where, I, where I'm from, where I was built. <laughs> And um, it's difficult to explain, but I would say I'm English, but I'm from Portugal. Portugal is the country that, uh, that made me uh, who I am today, you know. My whole life was in Portuguese for, for many years and, and um, my mum was worried I was gonna gonna forget how to speak English at one point. <laughs> But um, uh, yeah, so the, 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 yeah, Portugal is 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 home for me. Yeah. So we did uh, learn a lot uh, about you and your roots already. Of course, um, we ask our fans um, to ask uh, a couple of questions uh, yeah. towards you as well because they want to get to know you better as well. That's we cool. have them in here in this cut. It's, it's uh, a nice mug. You, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it does have Eric Dyer. <laughs> oh, it's got it. a picture and, of me as well. But yeah, go ahead. Take take the cut and. I'll take the cup. Yeah, take the cup and maybe we just uh, pick out two yeah, or three yeah, questions. Sure. And, Are they in uh, German can... or English? <laughs> no, they, they should be in English. <laughs> What is, was your idol on your position? Yeah, I didn't really have like a an, uh, a specific idol growing up, you know. I had like my idol idol was uh, Rafael Nadal or is Rafael Nadal. He still plays, so... Um, This was my. Oh, that's interesting. Because yeah, this was my sporting idol growing up. You know, it was, was like uh, my my hero and my brothers as well. We were huge, huge fans. If in football, it it changed a lot. Um, I really, I really liked Gerard Piquet at Barcelona. I liked um, Nemanja Vidić when he was at Man United. Is one of the reasons I wear 15 was because of this. There were some players at, at, at Sporting. Anderson Polga, he was a Brazilian center back. Pedro Barbosa was a midfielder at Sporting when I was growing up. Um, he was the captain of Sporting. Um, so yeah, I think as time moved, Roy Keane I really liked as well at one point. So that's a lot of uh, interesting names. Let's let's go ahead and take a take a second question. Which player was the hardest to defend against? Um, when I was playing, uh, like still as a defensive midfielder, I played against Philippe Coutinho when he was at Liverpool. I thought he was just amazing. Yeah. So this is always the one that sticks out to me. I played him once at Anfield and yeah, it was Yeah. I think amazing. We, have, we have time for one more question. One more. One more. Do you have any rituals before a game? <laughs> Way too many for this, for, for the length <laughs> of this podcast. <laughs> 
Oh, way, really? Way too many. My mother, she always messages me the same message before every game, always. And I always reply the same message. At the same know? point of time? Uh, before the game, more or less, you know, like, and this is for years, you know, for years and years. Anything with the shoes or the, the field or I don't know? No, I like my socks to be a certain way, but it's just like specific. I do the same warm up before I go out onto the pitch. You know, I do exactly the same thing before every game. Sometimes it's too many. It makes it makes me, my life more complicated than easy. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> if they're winning, if we're winning, they stay the same. If we're losing, then they, they change as well. So oh, that's too, interesting. Too superstitious. Yeah, it's good to hear. Yeah, we have. Uh, One more thing we always do in this podcast. It's called the Steilpass. The guest before you. Yeah. Um, Steilpass is a, a through pass. Is yeah, that yeah. in English? Yeah, a, a, a long ball, yeah, long yeah. flat ball, through yeah, pass. Yeah. yeah. And um, the guest before um, asks one question. In this case, Linda Dahlmann. She's a um, player from our female okay. team. Um, Did she know it was no, me coming on? No, she no. did not. So it's a, okay. it's a general question. Um, let's, let's give it a listen. And, yeah. and it's in German. Oh, okay. And uh, we try to find out if you if you understand right away. Mm -hmm. Was steht dieses Jahr auf jeden Fall noch auf der To-Do-Liste? The bucket list or the to-do list for this year. Is there anything special on it? Yeah, I want to win a trophy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that sounds good. What kind of guy are you um, approaching the future? Are you you trust in, in the flow or, or do you try to adjust as many things no, as possible no, yourself no. matt doherty is a good friend of mine we we he uh we have this saying which we always say to each other which is availability is the best ability i try and live by this so um yeah for me it's about just doing uh the right things right now doing the best podcast possible and then after that we will focus on um yeah whatever is next so I, f I i think the best thing to do is to try and be present and um try and um everything uh, as best as i can train as well as i can every day to prepare myself for the game and then play as well as i can each game and then what will be will be at the end wow that's a good one that's a good one i'll take that with me um <laughs> i think many of the viewers or listeners can, no, can take don't that listen uh, to me too much <laughs> <laughs> with them as well uh, that's a good one to finish this one off uh, of course we want to have uh One question, one style pass from your oh, side yeah, for yeah, yeah. the next guest. I don't really want to ask like a generic uh, sports question, you know. Oh, <clears throat> I like this one. I like, okay, that's I, perfect. I, I like this one Go a ahead. lot. Din dinner for four people. You you are one of them, obviously. So f you you have uh, three more guests. Guests, who are they? I like that. Yeah. I like that. We'll uh, style pass that to yeah, our next guest. Uh, thank you very much, Eric. And uh, yeah, we were very happy to have you here no thank you we for are you. very happy to have you here in our club <laughs> thank and, you uh, yeah thanks for being with us my pleasure thank All you the for best having me thank you very much for the future thanks thank you Hustle.